What's guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're interacting to the fourth episode of uh, Shadow's House. This one's titled Watchers in the Night. Okay, so last episode gave me a lot of questions. And a lot of different theories as to where they could be going with this. Uh, we finally met some uh, dolls who were, living dolls who were uh, more grown up at the end of that last episode. Um, not quite sure what their deal is yet, but they seem to be in charge of like the debut and stuff. So I wonder uh, where they're going to fit in on that uh, side. We've also got the Floors of the Lords, which apparently, um, once you made your debut, I guess you move over to there. And then you then have, um, like, there's a hierarchical system even within that, all under Lord Grandfather. Although the Living Doll are not allowed to call him Lord Grandfather. They're meant to call him, like, some other names. And there's, I think there's, like, a lot of them. Uh, that uh, uh, we uh, were revealed by what, what was the face? Um, Mia, right? Yes, Mia. Um, and then we started to discuss like the controlling of the soot. Essentially, uh, we started to uh, play around with, and Kate is exhibiting signs of being able to control soot, and that leads into my partial kind of theory of how the dolls are expected and can mimic their master so effectively is the fact that they have a little bit of soot inside them and therefore it's the it's the master who's controlling the soot inside and basically using them as a puppet that's my really creepy theory on which direction the show can go i don't know what don't know if that's necessarily the case and if so or if it's not that why would they bring up the idea of being able to control the soot in the first place unless they're implying that they can control soot so like things like phantoms and such which seemingly have well, no, they said they had their own will. And they had their own means of um, controlling. So it's not, that's not how, it's not someone controlling them. They are just, a collection of too much soot will result in them coming to life, which I don't know why they come to life. Why are we exuding soot? Why are we silhouettes? There's so many questions about this series. I'm loving it. I doubt we'll get all of them answered because, well, this is still an ongoing work, right? The manga is still releasing, and therefore we won't get all the answers because, yeah, it's it. We I bet the the manga readers don't have all the answers yet, so why would we get all the answers? But some of those answers should hopefully come through, um, and we should be able to see how us and our master are meant to be so in sync, whether it's just rigorous training or if it actually is a little bit more messed up that we kind of, uh, that we've kind of shown. Anyway, um, what was the episode title again? <laughs> uh, Watches in the Night. No idea where they're going with this one. Um, really have no idea where they're going with uh, Watches in the Night, but we've learned about the soot sickness and we saw its effects on uh, that one girl. Again, I'm terrible with names. Rosemary. There she is. Um, but yeah. I'm kind of interested in these people who are... Well. They could just be living dolls that serve like higher up lords. And because their laws and stuff have aged. They also have aged with them. Which would answer the question of yes, these living dolls do still age. Which would imply that they are humans that have been messed with in some way, which is think I still think is my main theory on what, who they are. They are just humans who have got a resemblance to the shadows, or the shadows are born from the people themselves. Like new theory time, just to throw it out there, just so we. I just want to get all my theories out there, just so we can start discussing them because I love discussing theories and stuff, especially on shows which encourage it. Um, when they brought the children in. They were told to drink something or were made to consume something. What if the shadow is then detached from them in whatever way that is, but they have that shadow elevated in some way? For some reason, it is higher position than the actual body. It's either that or they purposely picked kids that looked like pre-existing shadows. I think it's more likely that the shadow is taken from the person. Personally, I feel like that's more likely, but I guess we'll see uh, if that question's ever answered as well. But I'm just going to throw that theory out there as well, just because why the hell not? Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to get into the actual episode instead of theory crafting all day. As much as I like theory crafting, we, sh we should watch the episode. 
Uh, also, just so we can hear the, the the godly ED at the end as well. I just want to hear that over and over and over again, which is what I have been doing uh, for the past week, because the full version of the uh, ED did release. So I highly encourage you to go listen to that. Uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, just search uh, Nainai, N-A-I-N-A-I, uh, by uh, Riona, and you'll find it. It's on uh, her official topic page thing. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, what we do here on YouTube are time-based format reactions. If you want to see the full picture and picture, you can go to my Patreon down the description below. Four pounds a month gets some access to all picture and picture reactions I do on the channel, which is everything from the current seasonal lineup, as well as Patreon request shows such as Log Horizon Season 2, uh, Symphony G, and World Trigger. Uh, we also have a movie poll going on right now for what movie we're going to watch for May. Uh, we've added two new options to the pre-existing list, uh, and that is uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, classic Ghibli movie, as well as the recently uh, released um, Love Me, Love Me Not, which I'm very interested in because it's a romance movie and I'm dying to find a good romance movie again. It's been too long. Um, so yeah, just if you're a Patreon, go vote on all those. Um, and if you join Patreon uh, this month, you'll have access to all the winter shows as well, don't forget. Um, so go check all those out and you get a full month to watch all the winter shows that you want and all get up to date with all the spring shows you want for just £4, which I think is good value. Uh, also, the movies that I have on the channel as well. And I'll be adding some of the older movies I've watched previously uh, before I did picture-in-picture stuff to uh, that list eventually as well. So, uh, But here on YouTube, we have to do time base. So bottom left of the screen, you'll see a time of the episode. I count down 3 to 1 play. Now I'm play, you the episode, I cite the episode, and we should be in sync. We are watching this one on Funimation as per usual, since they're the ones who licensed it. We have the Anaplex logo and then the Funimation logo as the start. So about 12 seconds logo is give or take. Call them out as I go past, but ignore your screen flash on my face, the mic, or this part of my headset to tell when the scenes are transitioning. So, with all that said, let's get into uh, this week's episode, shall we? In 3, 2, 1, play. Anaplex. Funimation. Cheers. Here we go. Oh, hello. Star Bear's Wisdom. Mm hmm. Is that one of the guys that we met last time? Okay. OP time. I haven't met any of our side characters yet, really. Like, none of these ones that we've been alluding to for a while in the OP and ED. All right, here we go. Jesus.
Ajá. Mm. Yeah. Mm. We're on night watch. Yeah, complete suck up. Why suck up to Star Bearer, though? Hence Star Bear, I guess. Mm. Surprised she didn't start giving off more cert when she got rejected there, if I'm honest. There it goes. There it goes. Here we go. Hmm. Finally getting to see the others. Sure. Sure.
Wow, he has really terrible eyesight. <laughs> this situation. Wait, they, I thought they only had two. Where the fuck? Never mind. Okay, he's holding the third one, okay. He was probably holding the third one the other shot as well. Hmm. Huh. You can see they're all tired. It's a good point. Mm. Oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> Probably gonna sleep and then something's gonna happen. Shut up, I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. a nice line. <laughs> Rum, okay. But where have you gone? Something's happening. It's 
Sounds like something on wheels almost. It's one of the um no it isn't. It's one of the um veiled ones. I forget what the veiled dolls, that's the name. Mm hmm Don't even speak. Oh, I'm so curious about what's underneath the veil. I still want to know if they actually have anything beyond the, behind the veil. Like, if they have a face, if they're phantoms, if they're headless. I'm just thinking, like, Doctor Who and the ones that, like, tied off of the neck. They'll still come for you, though. Yep. <laughs> Definitely, yes. <laughs> but she does anyway. <laughs> but you mean you don't? <laughs> <laughs> Does she have one? Right. Mm-hmm. Ominous. I'm getting Promise Neverland gate vibes here. End of episode one. What, why, what behind these curtains? Is there something behind them? Was it just patterned the wall? I can't tell. Holy shit. Oh. Right. Hmm. Sure.
<laughs> I mean, yes. Where even are we? Ah, scorches. Oh boy. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blankets. <laughs> nice. Whose room does that lead into? Control panel and piping? Yeah, that's completely broken. Coming out of pipes, I guess? And then there's a breeze? Okay. Okay. Very nice. It's pretty well done. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd be one of the closest whoops of uh the dolls. <laughs> mm. All right, ED time. So that's a complete suck up, okay. And, um... Highly recommend you go listen to this full version on YouTube. It's so good. I think even better than uh, the TV cut version. Excellent. 
next time. The dead. Oh wow. Okay. That's early. I didn't expect the debut to be this early. I thought this was gonna be like an end of season plot. Okay, we're whoa, we're making rapid progress to the debut then, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Good episode. Very, very good episode. Um. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. I did notice actually. Just marking this one off on any list. Some people are a little concerned that apparently some things are being skipped compared to the manga. I can't say that. Well. As an anime only, obviously. That's how I'll be experiencing this. Hearing stuff skipped on episode 4 of a Cloverworks production gives me some mild flashbacks to last season, and that doesn't fill me with confidence. But I will say, as a as a purely anime only, I don't know what could have possibly been cut. It didn't feel like we missed a beat at any point in that. It felt like the entire episode was focused on uh, Aminiko, Rum, and Sean getting to know each other uh, filling up our cast, uh, learning a bit more about shitty suck-up blonde boy, um, and just f filling up our cast so we now have uh, all the living dolls that we're mainly following for this. That's what that entire episode felt like. It didn't feel like necessarily anything else was missed, per se. I'm sure, obviously, the source material readers are like, oh, that was definitely something you missed, but, like... As an anime only, I don't, can't say it hurt the show's pacing at all. It does kind of suck knowing that something has been changed already, but at the same time, anime adaptations that don't strictly follow source material are very common. So, I think just people are concerned because Cloverworks... It depends on how major the thing that was cut was. I have no context for it, so I have no idea, but... The Promised Neverland was quite the mess. Uh, and I don't think it's fair to say that this is going that route just yet. But I have slight concerns of, of hearing that. But honestly, that was still a really good episode. Um, it didn't really discuss much new necessarily with regards to uh, the situation in the house, per se. Um... It was mainly more just uh, establishing some side characters that we have yet to introduce at this point. Um, so I'm perfectly fine with that being the main focus for now. I'm curious how the debut is going to be... Uh, I didn't think the debut was this soon, but I guess it actually is, huh? Are we expected to debut right now? It's quite the expectation if we're going to be debuting so early. Because we're no way ready, I don't think. There's no way we're ready. So I'm kind of curious to see how it ends up going. But um, yeah, apparently there's something that Kate has to do as well. Kind of curious about what that line meant. But um, yeah, as per usual, another fantastic episode. I'm really loving this series. I really, really am. Whilst this one took a bit of a slumming down from like the mystery of what's going on, I'm sure it's just going to ramp back up next time as we get to the debut. Uh, I still have some curiosities and stuff. I discussed some theories at the beginning, obviously, on where they could go with it. I, I want to know what's underneath the, the veil dolls as well, because not able to speak implies they wouldn't have a mouth. Maybe because they don't... Uh, who knows if they have a head or a face or anything at that point. Don't really know, and I'm kind of curious, because I'm sure at some point we're going to see underneath the veil of one of them. And that's going to be probably a moment of shock for whoever sees it. So I'm kind of curious where that goes. But as per usual, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one as per usual. Uh, leave a like if you did, as well as your comments for what you thought of the episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe as well to see next week's episode, as well as the rest of the Spring 2021 Lightning Fight out on the channel. Thank you for watching. Till next time. See you guys later.